Concept. It's fast, it's furious, it's exciting, and it's got everything that makes a great game even greater. Will you please welcome this evening's contenders? They are Peter Ebden and Stephen Henry. <laughs> Uh, a bit nervous. I've never played it before. Um, I think everyone uh, takes time to get used to the rules and that, but uh, we've uh, watched a few of them matches before. So, had a few there, give it our best. Yes, I had a bit of practice on the table downstairs. Good stuff. How's, is, how's this going to suit your style of playing, do you think? Um, hopefully, well. I've been watching some of the matches, and obviously, the Potters have, have come out on top so far. So, um, you know, if you miss, you're going to get punished. As simple as that. Mm. All right, well, let's get the coin out of the pocket. Toss the coin and find out who's going to break. Who wants to call? Heads, please. Heads. It's tails. I'll break them. You're going to break. OK, gentlemen, take your positions. And away you go. And as they do so, let's have a look at some of the basic rules of ten ball. The cue ball is played from any point on or behind the bulk line by the breaking player. It must hit the apex red ball of the diamond configuration. Breaking it open so at least four balls hit the cushions or pockets of the table. Red balls and colours are potted alternately, with red scoring one point. The first coloured ball potted sets the value of the colours throughout that break. Green is three points, brown is four points, blue is five points, pink is six points, black is seven points, and the ten ball is ten points. When a player fails to pot a ball, all colours revert to their original value. And to complete the frame, the final colours must be potted in ascending numerical order. A ball must touch a cushion or be potted during every stroke played, otherwise a foul is awarded. After a foul, the next player has the option of taking ten points and playing on, or taking the cue ball in hand and playing it in any direction. So, by potting 15 reds, 15 colours scoring 10, and the final colours scoring 35, the maximum break is 200. Further rules will be explained as the frames are played. The first frame, Stephen Hendry to break. And the winner of this will go through to the first semi-final to meet Ronnie O'Sullivan. Stephen Hendry to break. Four balls must hit the cushions, they do. Peter Ebden up against some formidable opposition here. And he gets a red down, so now it's a One. choice of colour. One, Peter Ebden. <laughs> so Stephen Hendry now has a good look at the uh, table. Wants to try and get back to that ten ball if he can. One. So he starts his break. Can't get to the ten ball. So he'll go for the black or the pink. All colours in the break. Count six points. Seven. The pink then will set the scoring standard for all the other coloured balls in this break. Eight. Eight. 
fairly uh, slow paced compared with the uh, opening match. 14. But uh, though it's slower, it's just as effective. 15. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. I think all the players in this tournament are well aware that making a mistake can be painful and costly. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty nine, Stephen Hendrick. Peter Ebden then far from out of it in this opening frame. Well, the long red looked very tempting, but it didn't go in. And a nice red there from Stephen Hendry. Sets him back with a chance of a big break. Four colours in the break, count six points. Seven. And that looks nasty. And Seven. again, Stephen missed Henry. that one by a mile. The pendulum swings back in favour of Peter Ebden, but he needs to start scoring, and scoring big. And he's having trouble with the Reds. And care and consistency paying off for Stephen Hendry. Ball colours in the break, count seven points. The black ball down, and it's seven points for all the colours from now on. Nine. Sixteen. Oh, not a very good lie on the cue ball, but a fairly easy shot for somebody as good as this man. Seventeen. Remember, it's the best of five frames to proceed to that semi-final. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. It's all looking uh, very comfortable now for Stephen Hendry. Thirty-three. Stretching the advantage all the time. Peter Ebden has a quick look at the scoreboard just to see whether he is still in with a chance. And the sad answer to that is no, he's not. Forty. Forty-one. Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Stephen Hendry. Well, although Peter Ebden comes towards the table... 84, 1, 83 behind. I can say that one. <laughs> and Peter Ebden, yeah. told the mathematics of it all, concedes the frame. So, Stephen Henry wins at the opening frame. It was, um... Perhaps a feeling, an air of tension when you uh, when you went for that ten ball earlier on, that that might have been the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I would have liked to have been, you know, right behind the ten ball and not on the side cushion, and uh, only just about went, uh, but I went for it anyway. 
Hopefully I'll do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go see what Stephen's got to say. How do you feel it went for you? Well, I won the frame, so... It's all, yeah. all, all that matters. That's all that matters, Who yeah. cares about anything else? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Best of luck, gentlemen, in your second frame. The second frame, Peter Ebden to break. Well, can Peter Ebden get an advantage from the break? Really need to smash into this uh, pack here. Four balls have got to hit the cushion. And the fastest break of the tournament so far, 19 miles an hour. Yeah. Andy gets a red ball down. Trailing by one frame to nil, of course. All colours in the break count four points. Uh, well, he would have preferred uh, something of a higher value, making it hard work. Five. Just electing which red to go for now. Six. And a very nice little shot. Puts him on the black ball, but it's still only worth four points, of course. Very difficult to build up a big break. Ten. With the coloured ball being worth only four points. And as we've seen in so many of these frames, it's so easy to make a mistake. Eleven. Fifteen. Sixteen. Twenty. We've got the rest of it. Peter wanting uh, the rest for this shot. Oh dear. Well, after using the rest, he's now going to take a long rest. One. I think the way the balls are spread on the table, this Scottish gentleman will do a bit of a clear-up operation. All colours in the break count seven points. Eight. Nine. And Peter Ebden can see the second frame uh, slipping out of his grasp as well, I think. Sixteen. Seventeen. Stephen Hendry beginning to build a break. 24. That puts him four ahead of his opponent. Twenty-five. And the crowd appreciated that shot. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Another seven to the tally. And Stephen Hendry marches on towards victory in this second frame, it seems. But there are a number of reds still left on the table. Forty-one.
A break of 48, but that's only 28 ahead and still a lot of points left on the table. 49. And that one didn't even touch the sides. 56. Fifty-seven. Sixty-four. You have the feeling that this really is Stephen Hendry on a, a practice table at home. Seventy two. And the break just continues. And the bad news 80. for Peter Ebden is that Stephen Henry is just getting into his stride. Eighty. Well, Stephen Henry. A lead of sixty. Peter Abden will want to do the mathematics again. Six to behind. The frame conceded to Stephen Henry. Stephen Henry leads two frames to nil. You did make it quite difficult for yourself, didn't you, nominating that Brown early on. You really do make... It's an uphill struggle then, isn't it? That's right. I mean, I, I couldn't really, you know, do a lot there. I, I could have taken the five-point uh, blue, but really, you know, the brown was easier ball. But, uh, you know, the balls are pretty much open, and really I should have scored a lot more than I did from that visit. But uh, it's nice knowing that, you know, I'm just, you know, uh, giving Stephen a full sense of security before I come back and absolutely spank him to win <laughs> three, two. Do you, you don't think it's got anything to do with your shoes? Yeah, the, the shoes are a bit outrageous, but uh, as soon as this is like something out of Star Trek, this set, I thought, uh, you know, I'd really go for it today. No, I, you know, quite pleased with the boots. I thought, you know, give it some for TV. Well, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll do the business for you. Carry around the table in your third frame. The best of luck. <laughs> The third frame, Stephen Hendry to break. Stephen Hendry then two frames to nil in the lead. His opponent not overawed though, not dispirited. And fairly gentle break, 14 miles an hour. And nothing uh, drops in. Will the spanking start now? Well, there's your one. starter for one. Hits the jaw, rolls in. Oh, man! All kills in the break. Stephen Hendry likes Peter Ebden's appeals to the crowd. You've got to get the crowd on your side. And continues to put down 10 point balls. So this 22. could be a big break. Remember, Ronnie O'Sullivan with the highest break so far 110. 
And of course, the exciting prospect uh, for Peter Ebden is that he does have all the balls on the table when he started this break. He could make that 200 point break, and with it, the £10,000 prize. 33. Thirty-four. Another ten points. And if you just look at the table, the balls are uh, nicely spread, nothing on the cushion. It is on for Peter Ebden. Forty-five. If you're not a mathematical genius, you'll perhaps want to know how that 200 points is achieved. Well, it's 15 single points for the Reds, then 15 10 points if you start your break with the 10 ball, and then it's the 35 for the coloured balls in their numerical sequence. 56. And Peter Ebden, 56 on towards that tally of 200. 66. Sixty-seven. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Waves to his fan in the crowd. Oh. Seventy-seven. Looking for the rest. Now, the last time I said that, that put a little bit of a jinx on him, I think. 78. Not to this time, though. 78. Peter Ebden could still come back into the reckoning. 89. And this break grows and grows. 99. Well, the 200 points is a possibility. Five reds on the table. 110. One hundred and eleven. Nothing too difficult there, really. 121. 122. You can see with every stroke, Peter Ebden's confidence is growing. Oh, dear, I spoke too soon. 122, and the frame. Well, he wins the frame, he stays in the tournament, he doesn't get the £10,000. And that's how he ended the break. What should we talk about? Confiteers. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that he was uh, lulling you into a false sense of that's security right, yeah. and he was going to come back with a thrashing. Yeah, the, the seats were lovely and comfortable. I just sat and enjoyed it. It was excellent.
<laughs> no, it'd be great for Peter to do the 200. Obviously, if, if one of us does it, that'd be fantastic. How important is it uh, with, the, with, the, with the crowd we've got in here? I mean, obviously they are sort of egging you on and cheering you yeah, up. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I think the crowd get us going, and uh, as I say, the chances won't be uh, won't be too many chances to make the 200. But Peter had a great chance there, and you know, I think everyone was hoping he was going to do it. All right. Best of luck for the next one. Thanks a lot. The fourth frame, Peter Ebden to break. Peter Ebden back with lots of confidence. Needs to win this one, of course, though. Powerful break, 18 miles an hour, and once again, he gets a red ball in from the break. Paying dividends for Peter Ebden. Now, going for the black ball. A high-scoring uh, break in prospect. All colours in the break count seven points. Eight. Nine. Rappled in the jaws, but it dropped in. Sixteen. Seventeen. And Ebden, the break builder, at it again. Oh. <laughs> Small heart attack, but Peter Ebden recovers quickly. And again, plays to the crowd. I think you could say he's enjoying this. Twenty-five. Well, there is no reason why he can't build a big break and win this frame from here. Thirty-two. Just look at those balls, nothing really in a tricky situation. <laughs> A break of 40, but trailing two frames to one. 41. And that's the score line that matters. Still a lot of red balls left on the table. Oh. 41, Peter Ebden. And Stephen Hendry does come back to the table. Needs to put a red ball down. And then hopefully that 10 ball to start building a frame-winning break himself. One. And there's the red. And is this the ten ball? All colours in the break count ten points. And all the hard work Eleven. of Peter Ebden could soon evaporate. Another ten points. Twenty two. Twenty three.
33. And victory here would put Stephen Hendry into the semi-final with Ronnie O'Sullivan. 34. Stephen Hendry goes ahead in this fourth frame. Well, it's not over yet. Stephen Hendry. Again, it's a question of not just potting a red ball now. That's crucial but getting good position for high-scoring ball to follow that up with. Down goes the red. One. Looks at the score. Does the old mental arithmetic. Well, he went for the four. All colours in the break count four points. Five. It's times five, of course. Plus the 35 for the colours off. And then miss the next red. Five. Peter Ebden. Well, somehow you have the sinking feeling that Stephen Hendry isn't going to let him off the hook this time. One. All colours in the break, count seven. Eight. Three reds on the table. Eight, well, Stephen Hendry. Amazing how the game swings one way, then the other. And Peter Ebden could still win this one. Long legs and high boots help on shots like this. One. Oh, so close. One. Peter Ebden. He needed that desperately. One. All colours in the break. Count ten points. Eleven. So, Stephen Hendry having another chance to wrap this one up, and with it, the game. Now, we're at a situation 22. where there's just 35 left on the table. 25. A break of 25. Twenty-nine. So the break of 29. The blue to extend it more. It's all over. 34. Peter Ebden. He'll be walking home very soon, but Stephen Hendry, he's on his way to the semi-final with Ronnie Four. O'Sullivan. The black goes down, 47. Peter Ebden knows it's all over, in and out, but it doesn't matter, Stephen Hendry has won three frames to one, seven. sporting shake of the hands, and the crowd, well, they loved it. Steve, Steve, um, Steve actually said when you broke then, and uh, I, I didn't get a speed for your break, but uh, I've got a feeling it must have been a very fast one, um, but uh, he might as well just sit down and uh, 
it's all going to happen again. Yes. But in actual fact, it seemed to be a game that sort of won and lost on mistakes, really. That's right, really. Yeah, um, you know, should have won the frame from that visit. But there you go. You know, you've only got to miss one ball. Perhaps towards the end of the game there, I, I should have perhaps uh, stunned the uh, ten ball in instead of rolling it, giving it a chance to, you know, roll against the cloth. Mm. But uh, you know, there you go, learn by your mistakes. So if you had it to do again, what would you do? Anything you would do differently other than win, of course? I probably would have sorted him out outside before we <laughs> sure. actually got him. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you just can't afford to miss, really. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thanks very much indeed for coming along. Fabulous uh, attempt there. And Steve, uh, as we said, that, that last game, an interesting one, because it really was bouncing either way, wasn't it? That's Lots right, of mistakes yeah. made. Yeah, it was... Um... You know, the sort of standard of players that you have in the 10 ball competition, you know, usually one mistake costs you the frame. So, um, you know, to get two or three chances in one frame, you're quite fortunate. Well, you're going on into the semi finals now to, uh, to meet Ronnie O'Sullivan, I think. How do you feel yeah, about that? Yeah, another easy game. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Ronnie, Ronnie is devastating when he gets in the balls, you know, such, such, such a great potter, you know. Uh, as I say, one mistake and you've lost. Yeah, all right. Best of luck for that one. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen. Thank Round you. of applause, I think. Well deserved. <laughs> Stunning. And a great break too. Let's not forget your break. And that's it. Very exciting. We'll see you next week on the fastest Q game on television. It's Temple, and it's next week.